aim for ultimately what are the uses of epidemiology epidemiology basically aims at eliminating or eradicating all disease and ultimately aiming towards health and well-being of the whole society so when we look at elimination or eradication of a disease which we are going to deal with in the next sessions in detail we basically look at removing the disease from the populations so why how to do that is by first of all by reducing the occurrence of the disease in the population and secondly by looking at what is the cause of the disease trying to search for the cause and ultimately trying to eliminate the cause so if you don't have the cause of course the disease is not going to be there so if you remove the cause the disease is automatically eliminated now this is true in cases of diseases in which the cause is known but when the cause is unknown epidemiology also looks at finding out the cause so we for example we we talked of sars earlier now sars was a condition which suddenly emerged and it spread across the whole world nobody knew what's the causative agent for sars whether it is spread to air it is spread to water or what not but as the name suggests severe acute respiratory syndrome of course the mode of transmission was respiratory route but whether it was a virus or a bacterium or a pathogen causing the disease was not known so with the help of epidemiology scientists found out what was the exact cause of sars so that's one more use of epidemiology so in a nutshell what we have talked today is about the epidemiological approach as well as the uses of epidemiology now what i want to touch on very briefly is what i talked about the numerator and denominator when i spoke about making comparisons so in order to make conclusions about health data or health information we have certain measurements to be made or certain tools we use to make measurements so what are these tools we need to remember three important things when we talk about measurements one is the rate one is the ratio and the third one is the proportion now it's quite important to talk in epidemiological terms using these terms so when we talk of a rate we talk about occurrence of an event or a disease in a specified population so when we speak about the rate we need to remember that it has got three things within it one is the numerator next is the denominator and the third thing is the time specification what i mean by that is when did the disease occur when i spoke about talking about the five w's of epidemiology we talk about time so if a disease particular disease is occurring during specific time during the year we need to be talking about it that we have studied the disease about for 3 months or 6 months or whatever time period if we do not specify the time period it is meaningless so point to remember for a rate we have got a numerator numerator will basically include the frequency of the disease or occurrence of the event in the population which then forms the denominator and then we have a multiplier you can either multiply by 100 or 1000 or 10000 so it is nothing but the population with the multiplier in terms of which the rate is expressed next we talk about ratio now what is a ratio when we compare two different things with each other we call it as a ratio an example of which is sex ratio or doctor patient ratio when we talk of sex ratio we talk about the number of females per 1000 males so again we have a numerator and a denominator but what is important to remember what differentiates a rate from a ratio is that in a rate numerator is a part of the denominator please mark my words numerator is a part of the denominator whereas in a ratio numerator and denominator are two separate entities we are trying to look at the comparison between these two in terms of numbers so a ratio essentially may not have a multiplier to it it may either be expressed as per 100 or per 1000 or per 10000 depending on what you are trying to compare another example which i just now gave was doctor patient ratio so we just check at check how many doctors are available for how many number of patients and we divide the number of doctors over the number of patients and the number which we get is what we say is the ratio so the ratio could be 1 is to 4 1 is to 10 it is expressed as 1 is to 100 and so on so that's about ratio now what's a proportion now people sometimes get confused between a rate and a proportion the most important thing which you need to remember about a proportion it is that it has got a multiplier of 100 always which in other words means that it is expressed as a percentage whereas rate is 
not necessarily expressed as per hundred. It can be expressed as per one thousand, ten thousand, hundred thousand and so on. Proportion essentially means your numerator is again part of the denominator. But we use proportion to define or describe something wherein we are trying to discuss part of the whole. What I mean by that is, for example, in a class of male and female students, if I want to find out the proportion of female students, my numerator would be the number of females in the class and my denominator would be total number of students in the class multiplied by 100. What it means is from the class how much proportion is females contributing to is found out by proportion. Similarly can be done for males and so on. So that's all for now. Thank you.